All right, we're here coast to coast, New York City to Los Angeles. And Kara, you have a background, we just kind of talked a little bit about it, with a pretty clear direction. You, you've yeah. been in education, you've been in teaching. I love the fact what you did with the Peace Corps yeah. and we're working at a rural school. I mean, yeah. you've been all over, and now Spanish, tablas español también, or no? <laughs> Can you share with us how you evolved to using your educational uh -huh. technology in yeah. your career in your business? Yeah, I mean, I'm actually one who um, came a little late to the technology with kids bandwagon. Um, I mean, I've always been very comfortable with technology myself, um, but and, and it's funny when I look back on it because it seems so misguided to say, oh, well, it's something that I find very useful for my life, but it doesn't really belong in classrooms. <laughs> um, but, I mean, you still feel, you still see that, I mean, that impression with teachers. It's fading mm -hmm. every year, I think, as teachers begin to realize the sort of the benefits of technology. But I was kind of a physical blocks and physical books um, kind of teacher. And then um, it wasn't until I uh, was in grad school and got involved in a project sort of developing math software and really seeing the effects of it. And then thinking back on my classroom experience of the, oh yeah, you know what, when we used physical blocks, the, you know, the kid who was struggling the most was the one who was most likely to not be using the physical blocks for math mm -hmm. and the most likely to be building some robot in the corner versus when you have a virtual block like we do in our games it's so much more um you know you can't uh sort of get sidetracked in the same way um and i think it's especially important for struggling learners to have both experiences the physical and then as well as the, the regular um or the digital and that's that's right in line with what your your business is right combining the the activity with the learning right exactly exactly awesome mm -hmm. um well, you know, you're, you're certainly in a, in a, a critical, it goes without saying, but a fast growing industry, a yeah. lot of new innovations um, to the marketplace. What have you found are the challenges and, and the opportunities? Yeah, I mean, the challenges are, are pretty clear and known. Um, if you're selling into schools, if your schools are your primary customer, um, it's a, a, a very long sales cycle. Um, it's all based on relationships. Right. Larger dis it's easier to get into smaller districts um, because your decision making is sort of more decentralized, but those contracts are smaller and sometimes, you know, can feel like they're not really worth it. Um, versus large districts have these like oh, these purchasing systems and these RF, you know, these RFPs that are just um, a real challenge. But if you're in the business of collecting, um, you know, basically working with data, the school is your customer um, because you know you shouldn't actually be selling that data to anybody else. It's against the law, right. um, and so there's this real sort of tricky piece. Um, uh, but <laughs> on the other hand, um, I mean, it's amazing work um, and it's an amazing industry. Once you should, do develop relationships with schools, they're extremely loyal customers. Um, you know, basically they've invested their time and energy in adopting your program and they're going to stick with you um, and help you improve it and really be involved um, in a great way. Well, we all remember Apple putting the Mac into schools to get everybody used to using them. Yeah. Um, what about if you, if you get engaged with all the people becoming teachers before they graduate? Yeah. Well, there are some interesting folks doing um, uh, games with uh, pre-service teachers mm -hmm. um, to sort of get them sort of involved in that process. Um, and it's definitely an area that I think um, there could be more... Um, yeah, there can definitely be more time and attention put there. Um, I think in that case, it's a little less about, um, you know, supporting the, the learning that's happening now and, and more thinking forward to the future. But I think there's, there's really interesting opportunities there. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think you're in, the, in a space where you're going to be able to make some major changes um, yeah. <laughs> probably to, to the world even. Uh, hey, yeah. um, I've even seen where they've tested, they've shown babies, or not babies, let's say one and two-year-olds with books and they're yeah. trying to swipe the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My daughter does the same thing. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious and scary all at the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Hey, business-wise, you know, how is the SBA, which is how I got introduced to you, um, how have they been a, a partner to support you and Teachly? Yeah, I mean, the SBA and their seed fund has been sort of instrumental in us 
sort of being able to transition out of um, the research and the um, that we were involved in and really think about making products and you know customer discovery and you know <laughs> building mm-hmm. um, building a product market fit um, and, and that's been sort of essential for our sort of growth and development as a company um, and it's uh, and it's been really great because the SBA sort of values the type of expertise that we bring, um, which is sort of really strong understanding of kids and how they learn in schools and how they function. Um, and so it's been <laughs> it's been a game changer for us. Yeah, and it's um, and you are making a difference, and 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 I, I don't make light of that at all. You are making a difference, and you can actually change. You can actually change the world, starting with the U.S. Actually, with what you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Which, I mean, which, our, yeah, our school customers are all here in the U.S., but we have downloads all across the world as well. Um, and so it's a, <laughs> it's definitely you can see sort of um, many opportunities. No, it's it's awesome. Um, so for yeah. up and coming leaders, can yeah. you tell us what's been maybe the most important lessons and and, and or achievements that got you to this point with Teachly? And for that matter, what's next? Yeah, um, I think our um, our lessons have been, or some of the things that have been hardest, is that um, sort of developing great sort of products and tools for teachers and students is one thing, and then figuring out how to um, sort of reach and access those decision makers um, is kind of another, and trying to find sort of um, pain points that can really affect both of those groups or, you know, um, are easily recognizable between those two groups. Um, and so one of, the, one of the pieces that we've sort of come to from that is this understanding that that classroom functionality that we've created within our own apps is something that um, is very valuable to school leaders if we can provide that across apps so that they don't have to be onboarding and signing on to a million different products right, right. Um, and so that they can be using the latest greatest games that are coming out there um, and so our next project we have a um, uh, an, S- an SBA uh, grant to um, build out an SDK and open up that sort of classroom functionality in a way that maintains the sort of the privacy of all of the students and doesn't share any of their information with other de- other game developers, but that still allows them to play all of those different games on their account. So we got the scoop of what's coming next, then. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. And some and some there down the road there'll be a movie, Cara Carpenter changing <laughs> education, right? Maybe. Who there knows? you go. A um, <laughs> couple of little personal questions, kind of one two word answers. Do you have a pet or pets? Yes, um, I have a cat, Quincy. <laughs> Quincy, cool. Do you have a yeah. favorite activity or sport? Um, I would say hiking, backpacking. Awesome. Have a movie or TV show? Oh, movie or TV show. Um, <laughs> it's been a while. Are you smarter <laughs> than a fifth grader? Is that toddler. the one? Oh, <laughs> I have a toddler at home. Um, <laughs> one of my more favorite ones recently is Foil's War. Um, you know, they have it on Netflix. Um, a TV show. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. how about, do you have a favorite book? Uh, favorite book of the moment. Um, I read, oh, well, have you read The Art of, t- The Magic Art of Tidying Up? No, uh, sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very trendy right now, especially in New York with everyone in their small apartments. Right. Um, but it really helps you um, decide how to get rid of almost everything, all, all objects in your life. Um, um, so that's kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something that, that's useful. You would probably enjoy a book of a friend uh-huh. of mine. It's called Disrupt You. Yeah. Uh-huh. By, um, Jay Sam. It's all about disruptive um, startups and, and, and people like, like yourself. It's great. How about favorite music and food? Uh, favorite music and food. Um, I love live music um, of all varieties. Um, and so if it's, uh, you know, being able to see the sort of musicians, um, on, you know, mm-hmm. doing their thing is, um, is great for me. And then food. Um, I have a special love for Mexican food uh, and for Mexico uh, in general. <laughs> we love Mexico too. So, hey, that's awesome. Thanks so much. 
Yeah, thank you.